In this updated tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to customize the motion template. There are 13 templates for slideshows in PowerDirector. The motion one is perhaps one of the most complicated, but also one of the most fun. And so in this exercise, we'd like to show you how to customize it. There are so many things you can do, we're going to break this into several tutorials. So this is the first part of this particular tutorial. There are also lessons that we have on how to use all of these templates in their default settings. But our focus here is customizing the one for motion. What I've done is I've taken several of the images that I have, the pictures if you will, put them in track number one. And I'm going to highlight them and then I'll click on the slideshow button above my timelines. I want to add some music to the slideshow, so I'll click the plus symbol next to the music symbol, that button in the lower right corner, and we'll just pick a piece of music randomly and click open, and now we have the audio. When I click on the slideshow buttons, preferences button next to that, I find we have several things that are default. By default, it will fit the music to the photos. We'll give you more about that in the accompanying associated lesson. We have it in timeline order, which means it will take the pictures then and order them the way they appear on the timeline, not in the date of the file. And then we have a detect faces. Now in this particular project I have no faces. Uh, they're all images of plants, so I'll uncheck that and click on OK. Now we need to pick our template. The one we're focusing on in, in these lessons that we're going to customize is the motion one. So I'll highlight that and then click on the next button in the lower right corner. Now it creates my slideshow. If I were happy with all the defaults, I would be almost finished with this slideshow. But we're going to focus on the customization. To do that, you click on the button in the lower left corner. And now we're going to customize this. Let me ex explain the slideshow designer screen that you see here. We have a cropping area in the middle, and this gives you uh, the keyframe markers. The active keyframe is always the diamond that's in red. And to move between the first one and the last one, you click on the icon below, which is the arrow pointing either left or right. If I click it here, that was active because all of these start out with only two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end. And I can move left or right. Now I click on the opposite one and it takes me to the other keyframe, turns that red. So whichever keyframe I'm going to edit will be the one that is in red. So we'll start back with the first one. Now the default on this slide was to take it and widen it to the width of the image. And so I have the largest view of this I possibly can. When I click on the second keyframe, it basically shrinks it down draw, and keeps it in the center. The blue dot is the cent center of the image for that particular keyframe. And so basically what this does is it zooms in. It starts out large and it goes small. Well, let's click on the preview screen in the upper right corner and see if indeed that's what it does. So it starts big and it gets smaller. And you can watch either the preview screen or the cropping area screen and you will see the same effect when you press the play key. If we click on the second slide, we'll see the default for that. Again, it starts out with the leftmost keyframe and here we find it starts on the very left side, this size, with this as the center. And we'll click on the arrow, going to the right keyframe, and now we find it's slightly larger, I think, but it's moved up because the blue dot is higher. Let me go back to the first one. Yes, we have changed both size and location, so it will, it will um, zoom out and slightly pan up. Let's play it and see if that's what happens. It zooms out and it moves slightly, ever so slightly, upwards. Now we can change all these values. Let's, let's mess with this one a little bit. And I'll explain a couple more features here. We'll start with the first keyframe. If I want it to start 
tighter in on this, I can click on any of the handles on the bounding box. We'll tighten it up on the flower a little bit. And now it will actually zoom out more because you're starting with a smaller image. So if I play this, now I've got a greater zoom. So that's one option. I can also go to the second keyframe by clicking the arrow pointing to the second diamond. Now this is active and I can make it move up a little bit more yet. But the one thing you don't want to do is move it up this far because you will have a black area up here in your slideshow. You're off the image. So you need to be careful about that. We'll show you more about that later because it's a, it's a big challenge. So I'll simply move it back down a little bit more. You cannot change the proportions of, this, of the image because they're tied to the proportions of your project. You can change uh, the size anytime you want to, but it will always stay proportional, length and width. So let's take this one and play this a bit. We start out tight into the flower, and then we zoom out and the camera appears to move up as well. Let's take another one. This one looks much the same. It starts out large and moves inches up a little bit. We'll look at the second keyframe. That's indeed what it does. Let's try another one. Uh, this is an interesting one. Let's do a little bit more dramatic zooming. We'll start again with the left keyframe, the active one. We'll zoom in on the butterfly. We'll move to the last keyframe. And let's just say we want to zoom out, include that top flower a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger. Again, we don't want to move out of our image. And that looks pretty good. Let's try that and see what that looks like. We've just made a slight change because we know the picture and we know where we want the focus to be in that particular slide. Now let me show you one other thing before we end this particular part of this multi-part tutorial. Down here we have uh, time. And this is not the relative time from the beginning of the slide to the end of the time slide. This is the duration of that entire slide. And I can change that. It started out here with three seconds in one frame. Let me go to nine seconds and zero frames. And I just made this particular slide nine seconds long. Now I've increased the duration of my entire slideshow because I've messed with the default numbers. So now it will be a much slower um, zoom and pan on this particular slide. Let's play it and we'll see the difference. Much more gradual. I've given it more time. So this nine seconds in this particular occasion controls the time from my first keyframe to my last keyframe. You can also, by the way, uh, click on the TV safe zone or the grid lines. But I don't find these helpful because the most important thing to me right now is staying within the slide. And we'll get into that in the next lesson. We'll also show you more about multiple keyframes, not just two of them. This gives you a way to experiment with that. If we were all done customizing all the slides exactly how we wanted them to start, move, and end, then we'll click on the OK button. That takes us back to our slideshow creator screen. And then we click on the next button. And when we click on advanced editing, it will drop us into our timeline. Uh, I'm going to cancel out of that because we have more we want to show you in the next part of this tutorial.